Good morning everyone, Tater here and welcome to Tater Games. Today we are talking about C Sharp because some people commented saying that they want to see um, C Sharp for beginners. So I'm going to deliver that um, basically with telling you guys how to get into programming because for me it was extremely hard to kind of get your mind around it. But these are a few tips that helped me along the way so let's do it. All right, we're looking good. So the first one I wanted to share with you guys was basically um, wrapping your head around how programming works. Um, and the best way to explain it is how a computer kind of thinks. So a computer isn't smart, right? A computer can do things as long as you tell it to do something. And if you don't tell it to do something, it's not going to go anywhere. It's nothing's going to happen. It's called, hold up. God, how does this one work? See, programming is almost this difficult, so... Seriously? Wake me up, please. I've explained this before that C Sharp is my favorite because of how it is structured. It's structured incredibly well and it also works with Unity, so that was another thing that sort of pushed me into it. If you guys are wanting to create games, I would recommend C Sharp um, starting off. However, there is something, there is another way that you can actually get your head around how the computer works, how scripts are read. Um, and all of that type of stuff and the way I would recommend if you are starting off with absolutely no knowledge of programming I would recommend that you use a visual scripting software. I've actually mentioned this before that it's a good way to start out um, Visual scripts. There are some out there. Playmaker does cost a little bit too much I'm going to say for what it's worth but blueprints is of course another way that you can do it of course there are limitations to using an algorithm, but the good thing about it is it teaches you the basics of how to structure a code. In fact, if you do not know what algorithm is, then you should Google that up and check out how algorithm works. It's pretty much shapes and words and statements that sort of lead to a desired objective. It's basically how scripts work through algorithm. You're creating an algorithm, but in a written form. So it's considered a language. And just like any language, there are such things as accents or way people like to code. If you like to code a certain way, or for example, my code method is kind of, I like to say different than a lot of other people. Whenever I Google something, I look at it and I'm like, I don't understand it 100%. So I'll figure out my own way to go about this. Um, there are a few ways to go about this, but there is usually a best way. Unlike most languages, you know, every answer is correct. You can never go wrong with writing a story. Well, in this, there is logic to it and you can go wrong. In fact, things will break if you go wrong. And it's kind of important that you get it sort of right. Whenever I write code, it does always work, except it is written slightly different than somebody else might do it. And this will apply to a lot of you guys. So if you guys are just starting out, you guys are going to create your own little way of performing something. Of course, there are always better ways to do it. And a good rule of thumb is actually to never repeat something within your code. If two lines of code are written exactly the same in two places on the same script or the same class, then that means that there is a better way to do it. It may still work, but there is a better way to do it. All of that comes with learning and experience. It's not a bad thing to happen. I'm just saying that it can be improved. And even the most experienced programmers out there probably have scripts that still can be improved. But again, it is logic, it is thinking, and you have to do something very direct. For example, if I wanted to take a sip out of this coffee and we are programming me to take a sip out of this coffee, there are more than one function. You can't just write, take a sip out of coffee. You have to do every little detail that it takes to take the sip of the coffee. For example, I can move my hand, um, but now I need to program how my hand works. So we need to go in and then we need to take the movement of actually going and grabbing the coffee. And then we have to take the movement on up, then the sip, then the put down. Every, every single movement, every single tiny detail that you can think about about that movement is what you actually need to program in. So it is a lengthy process to try and get something right, but that is generally algorithm for you. A computer doesn't know how to fill in the gaps. It does know how to perform everything you tell it. So you want to tell it as much as possible to get the most fluid motion you can of sipping the coffee. I really wish this was explained to me a lot earlier, but it wasn't to me. And so it took me a little while to actually get used to the fact that, hang on, you have to do everything. You have to do every little step you can think of. Um, so hopefully that helps you guys out when you guys are starting out is that there are thousands and thousands of more you can add to something to make it a lot more fluid. Even if we're programming the basics of moving this from here to there, 
there is no ligaments on it there is nothing it is just one big object cluster and to move it from there to there requires a lot less code obviously if we were doing this inside of unity so if we want to move it from there to there we use um i actually won't <laughs> i won't tell you what we use it's just going to confuse you um we can use functions that unity has built in to it to actually take it from one spot to another so they've made code for c sharp so that you can move objects a lot easier it just saves you having to go well we want it there then there then there then there then there until we get to the final product right we don't want to have to write that code out so they have code implemented however those codes are separate so if we want to do unity specific things then that means we have all of this code that can move objects we have this code that can uh, do sort of we have code that can access other scripts we have code that can control text we have code that can do all of that type of stuff um but that is all within unity so what i'm saying is c sharp and unity are two separate entities unity has a lot of code embedded inside it if we go into c sharp we actually have very little the reason why unity and c sharp work so well together is because basically we're saying unity has all these functions and now we can use our language to actually program and mold those functions and the best way to understand this is that we've given what something basic c sharp is a basic language you can uh, mold numbers you can change numbers you can change names you can change words you can do equations you can do calculations all of that type of stuff uh, you can do within c sharp by itself we need to use something else to actually display that's where unity comes in unity is like the engine right <laughs> obviously unity is like the engine but this engine needs to be fueled with information for it to be able to work c sharp is just a means to control what is happening within the engine all of that stuff compiles itself and makes it into a game but you need to sort of control stuff within the unity engine and you can do this very simply with c sharp and i really i really i really really wished that someone had explained this to me because no one had explained those transitions whilst i was learning i had to figure it out myself and it was a lot of trial and error um maybe this doesn't help some of you guys maybe you guys know the fundamentals but i'm still going to keep explaining um but that is what i struggled with so hopefully if anyone out there and there will be people out there that struggle with the exact same thing it's just understanding why code exists in this form why we have to use it like this another part that always confused me was variables because i didn't understand why things were at the top why functions were down beneath why all this code is sort of messed up i like the structure of it i must admit the structure was something that helped me out i started with javascript and it was just a mess no one ever explained to me the purpose of variables and all of that type of thing variables are very simple they're probably the easiest thing to understand and variables are what holds data and when i say data i mean numbers letters um true or false statements and those are the basics those are three things that you will use most often booleans ints floats oh strings Four. those four are basically how you mold words how you mold numbers and how you mold whether or not something is true or false so those four are specific to c sharp and every other programming language out there uses very similar fundamentals but those stick towards c sharp when it comes to the unity engine there are even more things that we can control that are also variables variables are things that change have multiple answers towards what the variable actually is and from unity we can get even more stuff a float is a number an int is a number but they are written in different ways for example a float has a decimal place whereas an int does not have a decimal place and if you don't know what that means it's basically i'll give you some examples 1.8 is a float 8 is an int those are a way of storing numbers in a completely different method for example if we have players in game we want to count the players with an int because we can't have 1.5 of a player we call upon a float whenever we want to use data with decimal places for example speed is a good one you never perfectly have one meter per second or two meters per second i guess sometimes you do however there will usually be fluctuations between the two when you come to acceleration it will go from one meter per second to two meters per second then we need to calculate all that stuff in between and all of that is going to be a decimal place 1.1 1 1.2 1 1.3 so all of that is stored in the sense of a float 
the rest is stored in the sense of an int for whole numbers. Then of course we go to string. String is pretty much a string of letters or words or sentences. And finally a boolean or bool, B-O-O-L, is said to be just a true or false statement. We are saying whether or not something is true or something is false. So those are very simple stuff, those are very simple stuff. Now we have all the unity stuff which is really cool because now we've got more things to work with. For example, positions in 3D space. So a position in 3D space is saved as a vector 3. Now what a vector 3 means is it means it has three values for its position. You have the x value, the y value and the z value. One chooses the height, one chooses the width and one chooses the depth and it pinpoints a very specific direction. So, a vector 3 is a collection of three numbers, three floats. Gotta remember that it has to be a float because we can't have 1.1 meter from the origin or the center of our universe. We can have 1.1, we can have 1.2, we can have 752. And a vector 2 is even easier. It's on a 2D plane, so we have two positions. We have an X position and a Y position. I think we're going way over time for this. I might continue it next week and talk about a lot more how these things relate. But those are some things that I struggled with when I was learning. I really did. I, honest to God, I know it sounds stupid because it's quite simple when you, you know, look at it. But no one has ever explained that to me. I kind of just worked it out myself. Um, and yeah, I'm a bit of a dumbass. Anyway, I hope you all have a fabulous weekend. I'll be back next week, next Monday, and then we are going to continue this series on and stuff like that. Hopefully you guys like this video. If it doesn't do well, then obviously you guys know a little bit better. I might talk about something a bit more advanced. Um, and yeah, it's pretty much it. Hope you guys are all coffee. Mmm. Oh, yeah. I'm pumped. Time to play Battlegrounds. <laughs> or be productive. Uh, time to be productive. So you guys have a great weekend.